Welcome to the Dynamo Show. This is episode 15. My name is James Erd. I am the chief architect of WOW for a brand called Dynamo Entrepreneur. We support entrepreneurs in living well, predominantly speakers, authors, coaches, internet marketers, all kinds of experts, predominantly social entrepreneurs that are not only putting the oxygen mask on themselves, but also on the community. And today we have one of them, Mr. Chris Woods. My friend. Yes. Thank you for having me. You are so welcome. I am so honored to have you here. I, I've been a fan for, for quite some time. You know, we'll, we'll get into the whole food thing. You know, I'm a, I'm a big foodie. However, let's take it back. <laughs> let's take it back because I know you started your, your culinary arts, we'll call it, at a very young age. Six years old. Six? I started cooking when I was six years old. My mother had me in a kitchen cooking. Oh, wow. Making dinner for the rest of the kids. Yeah. Because I was the one that liked what she did. She was a home ec teacher. So actually I blame her for me working every weekend for the last 30 years. Oh, wild, <laughs> wild, wild. Were you on the straight and narrow because of that? Because you were like focused on something? Uh, were you always into cooking? Always into cooking. Really? Always, always, always. First job, 14, washing dishes, busboy. Yeah, in a yeah, yeah. restaurant called JB's Family Restaurant, which is owned okay. by John Bellabo, so you're, if you you're, remember him. Yeah, 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 of course. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, when did you decide to become a chef? Well, when I finished high school, and I was a young rock star and thought to myself, and my mom came, she goes, go to culinary school. Okay. This is what you're good at. Go yeah, there. This really? is your unique ability. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I yeah. said, ah, you know, my head was down to here. We were young, we were <laughs> partying. <laughs> yeah, sure, okay, mom. But I went and they had this little German teacher, Freddie Scholl, oh, nice. was the director of the program. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just sort of like fit under his wing and I just loved it. Oh, wow. I just soaked it all up. It was like crazy yeah, poison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's and I, awesome. I just rocked it. Right on, right on, right and I never on. looked back. So then you got into business of, you well, know, I went corporate or, or entrepreneurship? Or uh, entrepreneurship. I basically started when I came out of college, I went right into a hotel. And one night my mom said to me, okay, we're having the bridge party over. Can you, yeah. can you cook a dinner party for us? And I said, yeah, it's Saturday night. I'm, I was living at home. Yeah, I said, yeah. sure, mom, no problem. For the bridge club, I love, your, love these girls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so one of the ladies said, I'm having an engagement party for my son. He's getting married at the Lampton Golf Club, but listen, why don't you cook us an engagement party? And I said, well, I've never really done it before because I just work in different departments in the hotel. Yeah. Sure, why not? So... I gave my mom and dad 30 bucks, said, off you go for Chinese food. I used <laughs> my mom's kitchen. It was 60 people for this party. Oh, wow. And I had a little Toyota to sell, and I had everything in foil pants packed in this car, and oh, I went down to their house and cool. cooked this party. I came home, and I said to my dad, I said, Dad, this is what I'm supposed to do. No way. I'm supposed to own From my own night. catering company. I knew that right away. That was your big aha. And my father was a high school principal. How young were you? I was 21. 21. That's and great. my father was a high school principal mm -hmm. at Thistletown High School at the time. Okay. A vocational school. And he said, yeah. you make the menus. I'll take them to school. I'll get the kids to do it as a project for me. Nice. And then I started walking door to door. Lots of support, eh? Just door to door, delivering flyers. That's how I okay. started. So Thank I got you. two other part-time jobs working yep. at 
other places and I told people, I said, give me the crummy shifts because I, hopefully I want to have the weekends off because that's when I'm going to be catering. Wow. And so I, every morning I'd get up with my handful of flyers and target my market because once you know you were your target. Mm -hmm. So all the beautiful neighborhoods of Toronto, Mississauga, all over. Brampton, because I'm from, I'm from Brampton. Yeah, yeah, okay. I grew up, that's where my target market was, was all yeah, the doctors yeah. and all the lawyers, because yeah. my father was prominent. He was on the yeah. campaign for they the mayor him. at the time. That's and right. He was the president of the Brampton Hockey League. Okay, so great. all these well people known. already knew me. He was yeah, well yeah, known, yeah. so, so it was tapping good. into his network I sort of tapped bit. into <laughs> Dad's network and all that's the people cool. and all the it's a great all start. the politicians and the con head construction people out in Brampton, the rice construction. I've yeah, been yeah, cooking for that family for 30 years. Now, I know you know a lot about a lot regarding the food industry. Talk to me about the slow food movement in Canada right now. Well, it's a tough movement. You know, as you know, it was pretty much started in Italy and in California with Thomas Keller. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's really easy to have a slow food movement when you live in California. Yeah. It's a little tougher in Canada. <laughs> in Canada our, our market, our, our, our yeah. growing season is a, a little, little cheese, shorter. You know? So, yeah, yeah. like right now, we're going cubes. into the slow food <laughs> movement of potatoes and squash and beets, yeah. all the root vegetables, because everything else is very much almost done. Mm -hmm. So. We're trying. We mm -hmm. have a lot of artisan farmers. Uh, it's very hard to get an organic designation in Toronto mm -hmm. or in Canada, or at least in Ontario. It's very expensive for farmers to get these things. Yes, it is. Uh, but like 90% of the stuff we're eating is mostly organic. It's just that they don't have designations on it. So the company you have now, okay, when did it start? How did you start it? Why did you start it? I started that 25, 26, 26 years ago, and I oh, started wow. it because. I knew this is what How I was supposed to How young are you? <sighs> Care to share? 52. Come on, I wouldn't give you a day over 51. <laughs> you're, very <kind. laughs> you're very kind, old man. You're very kind. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, let's, no, let's talk about that business, because I know you're having like outrageous success. Oh, you know, you're so it's, well known it's in the It's growing hand over fist. I just yeah. built a 4,000 square foot. How do you keep foot. up? Uh, balance. Balance. I take six 10-day holidays a year, no cell phone, no computers. Wow. And I take it out of the country. Wow, I think have one. To. No, well, I think I need you two. have to learn how to balance that out. <laughs> yes, and then it's all about your rejuvenation time. Yeah. And you're using, you know, your process. I love that word, rejuvenation. And your unique process. Yeah. Do you eat healthy? I eat very healthy. I work yeah. out four times Scale a one week. Scale of 1 to 10, how healthy do you eat? Nine. A nine. Well, very I'm also good. a private chef for a family, and they for having cooked in 17 years. Mm -hmm. You know all these uh, diet books, we'll call it out there. I mean, I don't even like the word diet. Diet starts with die. You know, it's like <laughs> st starvation. But for lack of a better word for our viewers, I use nutrition plan. You know, I'm quite up to speed with nutrition yep. planning. I've been a nutrition specialist. I've trained all kinds of athletes and fitness models on the covers of the magazines. I have my own belief systems in regards to what system works for me and for my clients. What system works for you? The one I'm using right now, I, I eat in the paleo diet. Okay. And I've got a lot of clients. I've got a couple of hockey players and a couple other people that I cook personally for when they want to get into shape, and I put them into the paleo. Mm -hmm. I find it's one of the better programs. I've done South Beach. I've done The Zone. I've read every yeah, diet yeah, yeah. book on the planet because I have people. I'm a Zone fan. The Zone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's the first one it's I started with. That was the first hormones. one I started with. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. I'm interested in learning about the Everything paleo. Everything is all good. It's you all. There's a big all, paleo movement going on. It, well, it's huge it's right now. It's, it's huge, growing. but it, it's just, it's just simple. Why? Eating. Why is it growing so fast? Because it's easy. It's easy. It's yeah. just easy. It's like caveman stuff. It's just protein, <laughs> protein and vegetables. <laughs> you can eat as much as you want. Yeah. As much as you want. It's simple. You just got to keep away from your grains. Simple, keep away from uh, your cheese and your dairy, which is hard, but you always have to have your cheat day. Yeah. You know, five out of seven is, is really good. Who inspires Chris Woods? Who inspires me? Two, three people that maybe uh, get the juices flowing. Uh, I think I'm the one that inspires myself because I get up every morning and once again, it's all about your gratitude, thanking everyone who works for you, your team that works for mm -hmm. you. I've got a fabulous team of people that work for me. Yeah. You know, you know you, you're not here without your team. You aren't. And I'm not here without my team. They that's all make true. me look good. Yeah, they do. And uh, that's what it's all about. My that's team did the, my hair today. They, no, they did a great job. Uh, I like the way they did the little it. thing on the side. It's pretty Let's cool. Let's say some younger chefs, chef entrepreneurs that are getting into this space. Share with them maybe a few nuggets, two, three nuggets. How do you get into the space and how do you become successful like Chris Woods? You got to be really crazy passionate about what we do. 
We, this is probably one of the toughest jobs on the planet. True. I always tell the young chefs that come into my kitchen, please, you can start here. You learn a lot in my industry because it's catering. We cook something different every day. But all the young kids that I go to talk to at schools and things, I tell them, go to the hotel. Work with 200 chefs. Watch everyone. Everyone. Pull an idea from everybody you see. It's all about knowledge about food. And if anybody ever tells you that they know everything about food, run away from that person. Anyone has a huge ego, run away from those people. You don't want to hang around those people. It's, we're cooks, and our job is to make people happy with what we serve them. And if you can do that, that's goosebumps. When <laughs> I talk about this kind that's of stuff. passion, I love dude, it. Dude, it's all about feeding people, feeding the planet. I only cook healthy, use the most organic products I can get for my clients, because that's do. what they want. Yeah, yeah. How and, do they actually find you to get some uh, of this great cooking? <laughs> you know? I'm really easy to find. I, yeah. You can Google me all over the place. It's true. Uh, it's uh, Christopher Woods Catering Events is the name of uh, .com is the name of the website. Uh, you can go to the famous People's Players Theater. Yeah, I'm um, all, all over their website because it. it's I a love famous it. charity that I work with. You do, you do. Thank you so much, Chris, for coming to the show. Thank you. My, my name friend. is James Er. We're going to cut to a short commercial break, and we will be right back with episode 15 of the Dynamo Show. Welcome back to the Dynamo Show. My name is James Erd. I'm the Chief Architect of WOW for Dynamo Entrepreneur. We are going to continue things with a really, really, really great friend of mine, Sandra Nash. I am hey. so happy to have you on the Love show. Love to be here. I am such a fan. I know both of us are kind of into that whole interior design space. You as a business, me as a hobby. We'll get into that in a second, okay? Let's take it back. Let's go back in the day a little bit and talk a little bit about your younger years. I'd love to start there because I know you have quite a story. <laughs> we all have a story, we? Don't all we? do. It makes you who you are today. Isn't that true? Um, I was working for an insurance company. Do you want to even go younger than Younger, that? younger. Let's talk <laughs> teens, 20s. Where did it start? Uh, I guess in my teens, I was, I was taking art and creative stuff. I got into the corporate world and then realized, you know, I had more, well, I was more passionate, I guess, when I was creating things. Mm -hmm. um, and it started when I bought my first house okay. at the age of 23. Really I can't young, believe I did eh? that. Wow. Yeah, I, I had to drive an hour to work, but wow. uh, yeah. And uh, decorated my first house. And next thing you know, I was decorating everybody's houses and the realtors and I bought and sold some houses and the realtors were the ones that said, hey, you should do this for a living. So you were working side by side with them? I did, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any yeah. corporate positions? Were you were you always kind of an entrepreneur? Or did you start corporately? No. So I was in the corporate world in the insurance okay. uh, industry, which I figured there's always going to be a need for that industry, which I was right. Yes. Um, and I worked for the largest insurance company in the world, and it was great because I could actually work with the people. I found that it was the people I was more connected with than the actual tasks. So okay. I would go into departments and and run the department, but I had no idea what they did. <laughs> <laughs> but I could motivate the people. <laughs> Very good, very good. So it taught good. me a lot to, for running my business, that's yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's great, that's great. Now, who, who, where did you pull your inspiration from? Let's, let's start there. Well, I have to say first and foremost comes from the fashion industry. Okay, um, that's cool. You're very fashionable. It, <laughs> I love these boots, oh, you know, look at these boots. Those are great. <laughs> Thanks. Um, premiere for today, that's yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but fashion, basically think of a black dress. Okay. You know, you, you can have a plain black dress or you can accessorize it and, and completely change the look of it. Yeah. Um, but I also travel all over the world. Uh, North Carolina actually is one of the world's largest trade shows. It's 13 million square feet. For interior design? Yeah, or? 200 buildings the size of the Sky Dome. Imagine trying to cover that in five days. 
13 wow. million square feet is crazy. Wow. And from there's 80,000 people from around the world that all come and with their inspiration. All industry people or is it uh, open yes. to the public? No, just no. industry. Okay. They bring in 10,000 chefs because there's so many people. They don't want you to leave their booth. So they they uh, really take, take care your, of you. Yeah. yeah. But uh, lots of inspiration. I, uh, I actually went on a trade mission with the Canadian government to export my product and mm -hmm. ended up importing mm -hmm. probably a couple million dollars a year. 10 years ago and it's kept wow. on going yeah now i know in any business you know there's there's highs and there's lows and there's 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 good and there's bad and there's weird okay <laughs> now i've been in some houses that is like very distasteful mm. um you know having the eye for color having the eye for design you know some of the designs you know in my own personal opinion i do a great job however but i've been in some like craziness you know and i'm sure you have care to share any crazy stories Ah, crazy stories. Um, hmm. Well, uh, where do I start with that one? Basically, it's about getting it to the person's personality and lifestyle. Yeah. It's not about setting a movie set or a stage for everyone else to judge you. It's about setting a lifestyle stage for yourself to mm -hmm. live in. So, crazy stories. Uh, I've done houses as big, as much as $23 million that had bowling alleys in them. I would oh, lose wow. my tradespeople in the bowling. home because I thought they left and they thought I left. <laughs> um, I've done yachts. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's the bars and restaurants are, are interesting because it's the experience that you're creating the for the, the people who come to it. So you have to sure. understand who's More of going to it. atmospheric design, I call that. I used to own a nightclub, so oh. I, I call it atmospheric design. Well, there you're you kind go. of touching visual, audio, kinesthetic. It's not just the visual. Exactly. Right? Any big messes you walked into that you had to clean up? Oh, so I specialize in doing builder show homes. Oh, so great. my first job ever uh, was when someone else was supposed to do it and for whatever reason yeah. couldn't in the timeline. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I got called in to do it with two weeks notice and literally I was hanging drapes on wet paint. You know, <laughs> they were still tiling the floor. They're bringing in trays of, of glassware and stuff for the catered event. They had a thousand people coming mm -hmm. and we're trying to move toolboxes to anyways we made it work and they never knew and we were just finished and we turned around and the kitchen guy came through with the muddy footprints on the white carpet oh boy all the way up to the upstairs the and we're hour. all and we're all wearing little booties like what? Uh, <laughs> you know uh, and anyways yeah so that uh crazy, he, crazy. he was busted that day boy but yeah so we're scrubbing the floor with uh, <laughs> five minutes before everyone showed up now i know you do a lot of different appearances television and mm -hmm. radio etc with all these do-it-yourself tv shows okay mm -hmm. why hire a desire why, why why hire a designer you know people like myself that are like the the point and clickers or the ones that well, like, like to do it themselves you know uh, why would I hire a designer? Well, first of all, it's a very steep learning curve and mm -hmm. it's very costly to make a mistake. So if you go and tile your floor, for example, and mm -hmm. then decide oh, you don't like it, that's pretty expensive to try and fix it. Uh, it is a very long learning curve and we get dis discounts on things. Mm -hmm. What you see in Canada is about 10% what's really out there. When I go to North Carolina, you would not believe what's there, especially when the, the world, dollar's eh? high. Yeah. We don't see that filter into to the places here. So, you know, we can pool our resources and actually uh, purchase things that you would never otherwise see that are better quality. You know, there's a lot being said right now about the disposable uh, furniture, mm -hmm. not to name names of companies that produce it, which is great when you're in university, but yeah. it's filling our landfills and causing all kinds of issues. So having yeah. the right yeah, yeah. design that's functional, that makes mm -hmm. your life more, yeah, yeah, your yeah, life yeah, is yeah. easier. Too. What would you say some of the biggest challenges of the industry are, or maybe a challenge that oh. you maybe have encountered yourself? It's a huge, I've seen it change. I've been in, sorry, I have to say, I've been in it 20 years. Come on. Uh, okay, maybe So you more. started when you were six. Maybe more. Thank you. Oh, I love this guy. <laughs> um, basically, the internet changes, so everyone thinks, oh, I'm good. I may present something to someone, yeah. and they'll try and shop it around, um, or they feel like, um, you know, it's easier. DIY on TV has made it look like it's done very quick. What you don't yeah. see yeah. is the 20 camera crew and all our crew that's in the background yeah, and what's yeah. really going on behind <laughs> Hello, the everyone. scenes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and they think, oh, that's easy. I can do that. And until you do it yourself, you don't know. And sometimes it's too expensive to fix it afterwards. 
And it's it, to living through a renovation, if anyone's done that, is a nightmare. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah, it's so stressful. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. doing it right once it makes sense. So you got husbands, you got wives. Husbands. Okay, husbands <laughs> yes. and wives. Or husbands oh, and husbands it. or wives I'm and wives. I'm the marriage wives. counselor. Yes. You know, we go into a unit and you have conflicting opinions. How do you become that mediator? Exactly. And that's probably one of my strongest strengths that I learned in the insurance industry when I worked to manage people. Basically, I have to get in, get into their mindset and figure out what they want when they don't even know. Mm -hmm. And it may not just be a, a husband and wife, it may be partners in a business when I'm decorating. Mm -hmm. It could be, you know, this one's worried about the dollar and this one's worried about the look and they've never discussed it. They don't understand the long-term effects of their decisions. Mm -hmm. So it's getting in their mind, getting them all on the same page and then making them decide collectively. I love it, I love it. Now is it about nails and paint or is it deeper than that? Is there a big why? Why do you do this? Why do I do this why or do why do should it? someone else why do Why do you do this? Why does Sandra do this? I love making a house a home. Making a space that's personal for you, that's not a cookie cutter, mm -hmm. that basically makes you more effective, that you rest better at night. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it, a lot can be said about it, especially once you've experienced it. It's like anything, by contrast, unless you've experienced it, you don't know you're missing it. I know. On a final note, maybe talk a little bit to the audience, you know, maybe two, three tips that they can implement into their own in interior design <laughs> sets. Well, I would say to get inspired, to be inspired to do your research. Um, obviously, the internet, there's a great website. Can I see it? You can. Uh, yeah. no, it's not mine, and I'm not affiliated or anything, but there's a website called House, H-O-U-Z-Z. -Z, yep. And you can type in, there's, I think, 18 million images on there. You can type in anything and basically make a portfolio of what it is that you like. Maybe you're in a restaurant or a hotel. What is it you like about that space? Take a photo and focus on each thing, not necessarily the total look of it but what it is you like about it um, and make a plan and make a budget and think about it over a 10-year period too many times we look at it over a 10-month period it's true. budget it divide it into the 10 years and it's an investment and hire Sandra Nash how did they find you <laughs> so my company's called making a scene so www.making-a-scene scene spelled s-c-e-n-e dot com I love it thank you Yay. so much Sandra Nash thank you. how awesome is that I'm inspired are you we will see you back on episode 15 of The Dynamo Show. Welcome back to The Dynamo Show. This is episode 15 where we interview movers, shakers, doers, and athletes. Today we have one of them here, Mr. David Cooper. Welcome to the show. Oh, thank you for having me. You're Excited so welcome. To be here. You're so welcome. You know, I got to say, you're our first real true professional athlete that's been on the show. It's been, uh, you know, a lot of wannabes, I guess we could say, and a ton of really great entrepreneurs, but you're both. You're both that entrepreneur and you're the athlete, and we're going to get into all that. However, let's take it back. Let's go back in the day. Let's go back in the ball court in high school. You know, let's start yeah. there. Oh, yeah. Well, um, you know, funny, I uh, started playing sports probably when I was about uh, nine years old. Okay. Um, it was in South Florida, Miami, uh, South Florida, um, Broward County. That's why you're a Heat fan. Yes. Yeah. Die hard Heat fan <laughs> from South Florida. And uh, it was my aunt, actually my, uh, my Auntie Pat, who brought me my first um, Miami Heat game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, when they first came out. Before the Raptors. Before the Raptors. Before, the Raptors. before there was any, before LeBron, before, before any of this six. happened. Before the Six <laughs> happened, before the Raptors was. Yeah. And, um, and we went, and I, once I went there, I had a great time, and I saw the players, I saw everything. I said, no, one day I want to become a professional athlete. That's awesome. And uh, it started there. Yeah, 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 yeah. And were you focused on school? Were you a good kid? Did you fall off track ever? Or did sports keep you on the straight and narrow? Well, you know, it's funny. Um, sports helped a lot. Uh, so we lived in South Florida, and at the time, it was a great place. Um, mm -hmm. It was, uh, you know, obviously there's, there's, there was obstacles and different things that you had to overcome. And, of course. Um, one of the things that my, my parents, they did a phenomenal job, my dad and my mom um, and my brother, just raising me to, to be focused and mm -hmm. to, um, to have a why, have a passion from a young age and my dad was a minister mm -hmm. so we traveled all over mm -hmm. you know helping people and doing those things so That's I awesome. said you know what I, I you wanted, partook in all yeah, that? Took, took all that in and yeah 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 and um, I think it kind of helped me 
uh, become what I wanted to be in terms of that, an athlete. Help now, me. do you come from a, a, a string of athletes? Is, is there a family line of athletes, or are you kind of on your own? Well, um, you know, we, we do. We do. Uh, my, uh, my, I was inspired by one of my cousins, uh, Gabriel mm -hmm. Frazier. He played football. Are they all um, short like you? Um, yeah, he's a, yeah, he's a, <laughs> <laughs> actually, I, I took all the hype from him. He took uh, all the muscle in the uh, family. There you go. And, and uh, no, he, he, he inspired me, and um, a lot of my cousins wrestled and played football and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and everything like that. So it was one of those things where it's either you're going to perform, become a musician, mm -hmm. or sing or something like that. In our family, we have a lot of that. Okay, and, good. And athletes. Performers? Yes, yeah, and performers. Yeah, right on. Talented family? Yes, very talented. Now, any other sports on the radar? I mean, basketball, you know, it, 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 it's great to have it because you're primary, but did you ever do any, like, cross-season, off-season off stuff or get into any other team sports? Yes, um, actually, I played, uh, football was my first love. Okay. Uh, football was my first love in yeah, South yeah. Florida. What I team? Um, I played for uh, Miramar. Yeah, what NFL? Uh, 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 pardon me? What's your fave? What's well, my fave? Uh, Miami Dolphins. Oh, there you I'm go. I'm a Dolphins fan. <laughs> I'm, hardcore I'm, Miami I'm hard fan. Core All Florida Miami. boys, South Florida, Miami. That's All it. Miami. That's it. Yeah, so, um, yeah, and then uh, from there, I, I started playing basketball later on in my life mm -hmm. uh, in high school, but uh, I always started football as my first love. Any passion. injuries? I did. Yeah, I big did. ones? Yeah, a lot of big ones. Um, I had six, a lot of big ones. A lot of big ones. Okay, uh, okay. I, um, that's what kind of uh, had me retire early. And, oh, for um, real? I had six, How young are you now? Uh, I'm 33. 33. 33. Yeah, when yeah. you retire? Uh, I retired about uh, six years ago. I was okay. about 26, okay, 27. Yeah. Care yeah. to share? Yeah, sure. Um, uh, I, after, uh, during, during university actually, uh, mm -hmm. I went to James Madison University. Mm -hmm. uh, I played Division One there and mm -hmm. um, was excited. Um, I thought I, my future was pretty bright there, mm -hmm. um, but unfortunately I got a, a knee surgery. And uh, um, after my knee surgery, uh, I came back and had another one. It's called micro fracture okay. uh, surgery, which is pretty fracture, hard. To, fracture, yeah, yeah, fracture, which is it's in the knees, pretty hard to come back from. Mm -hmm. And once I started making some strides and really coming back um, in in uh, November of 2005, I got into a car accident, mm -hmm. um, and that pretty much uh, put me under in terms of uh, me being able to get to that next Plan. level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I played professionally afterwards. Mm -hmm. uh, I played for about three or four years. Mm -hmm. I had a chance to travel all over the world and play. Oh, um, how great is that? Yeah, Any so favorite, I, favorite places that you played? Yes, um, Singapore. No uh, way. Singapore, yes. That's on my bucket list. I, oh. I, I just love everything about Singapore. It's, it's a beautiful. fascinating city, eh? It is. I heard it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Yeah. And, uh, I heard you can't even like chew gum or what is it like spit gum out or something like yes that? Or you um, get caught spitting gum you go like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, know, you get your arm cut off or something. yeah you, you, know, <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know what's so funny is that um you know when we went over there it was one of the things that uh we'd heard about because it wasn't too far from um the time frame that an american had went over there i think he was he had graffiti uh the wall and he had had to get in lashes <laughs> So, you know, we were hearing all these rules that you can't chew gum if they catch you spitting gum or spitting on the sidewalk. And yeah. you know, so everyone's just all. For real. Yeah, but you know, it's funny. Um, it's kind of the exact opposite. Yeah. They kind of really take pride in, in where they are. Yeah. So it's not one of those things where if, if you're caught doing something, then you're in trouble. It's more like they take pride in it. So when you look at where they are and you see the place, you, yeah. you, you want to throw away your, your yeah, rapper yeah. or you want to. Huh? Can they play yeah, ball? Yeah, they can play. They can For play. Real? And they're passionate. Yeah, they're yeah, yeah. very passionate. What country would you say surprised you the most? What country of athletes? Of athletes. Um, I think the country of athletes that surprised me the most, um, I'd say is uh, Puerto Rico. Um, Puerto Rico. You know, it's, you know, it's a, it's a U.S. Yeah. territory. Um, yeah, yeah, they're yeah. pretty passionate about it in Puerto Rico. Really? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, what about Europe? Uh, any, any countries that stand out in Europe? Uh, Europe yes. Um, well, there's a few countries. Um, I, I visited some countries in Europe. I never played in, in Europe, in, mm -hmm. in China, in, uh, in, in, uh, in the Caribbean. And, mm -hmm. But uh, Greece. Greece, the Greece, Greeks, eh? Greece. Oh man! Yeah, they love you, the ball. Oh, they love it. Yeah, they yeah, love yeah. it. Greece is is. Any very football, or we call it soccer over here? Did you ever get into that? Are you a fan? Oh yeah. Well, I, my dad was always a fan. Yeah, right? yeah. So yeah, we grew up. Uh, we grew up with soccer first. Okay, soccer good. Soccer first. I like and, your dad. Yes, yeah, yes. Soccer first for me, man. Yeah. What's his yeah. team? Um, well, his team was Brazil. 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 Okay. He's uh, a yeah. Jamaican heritage. I'm German. Oh, really? We, we won't go there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I yeah, I'm a big Bayern Munich fan. Okay. You know, so I, I, lo I love my ball. I played soccer for quite a few years competitively. So, yeah. uh, you and I have my own injuries. Those good. injuries they happen, you know. As as you know, I was in extreme sports as well. Did you do any extreme sports? Um, no, I didn't. No. I, uh, I love watching it. Yeah. And wishing. No jumping out of planes? No jumping out of planes. Not yet? Not yet. Yeah. Not yet. That's coming soon. That's next chapter. Yeah, for real? Yeah. What's next? Oh, yeah. Next I got chapter. a jump coming up for a group of fellas. Hey. I'm going to commit you right here on television. 
Hey, let, let's he's do like, it. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, that was a joke, man. Uh, right, right. <laughs> yeah. No, but it's good, though. What, what's next for you in regards to sports? Are you, are you like, seriously going to undertake anything else? Are you going to coach some young fellas? Uh, yes. I mean, that's, uh, that's, that's where my passion lies. Um, for real. In, in coaching, nice. coaching, teaching, and um, giving back. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, and uh, I love the sport. I love the game of basketball. I love sports altogether because okay. of what, you know, what you learn, what you, t- what, what you, what you grow from. Mm-hmm. Um, all the values that's taught there, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, coaching is definitely where, I, where I'm mm-hmm. going to spend a lot of now my time. Now your father, he was uh, very religious, obviously, in the path that he took. Now, yeah, did yeah. you follow suit with that? Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, a lot of a lot of principles that you know I grew up, I grew up in guiding principles. Yeah. I think um, really helped sh- shape you know mm-hmm. who I am and give me a passion for people. I just love people. I love love to see them develop and grow. Um, you know, we, we don't see everything eye to eye, you know, and, and of course, you know, we never do. We, we never do, you know. Until you we're know. older. Uh, yes, until you know, older, and like, they were like, that's what the heck they were that's doing. That's what they you meant know. by that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, Told me true. eight million times. I get it now. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. I get it now. Right, no, it's true. Any yeah. crazy stories? Anything that comes to mind during your career? It's true, man. Think of something whack? Oh, oh my god. You got god. a lot, I see oh, it right gosh. there in your eyes. You're like, oh boy, where do I start? Oh, <laughs> man, I, see, I don't even know where to start. There's so many crazy stories. Um, I mean, I've seen something fun. Oh, something fun. Something fun. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, I had, oh, we had, oh gosh, I don't even know where to start. Well, I, I guess one of the one, t- intriguing uh, uh, story was um, uh, when we came, we got it, we were coming in, we were flying in for a game. I was in Singapore, and um, we were there, uh, ready to go, we were supposed to be playing, um, all set, and uh, we come and get the report that our luggage hasn't come in yet, uh. and in our luggage has all the all the jerseys, all the, the uniforms, gear. all the gear. Yeah. So pretty much we're all sitting there um, and waiting pretty mm-hmm. much in the locker room with, uh, with nothing. Okay. And, you know, so we're just we're walking around like underwear and just uh, the, the game's the going. Game's everybody, everybody's kind of like, you know, can we do an interview? And everybody's kind of like, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, you know, yeah, when the clothes yeah. come, you yeah, know. Yeah. So that was pretty funny how it all kind of turned oh, no. out and worked out. It was pretty cool. That though. affects the whole team. The whole team. Yeah, yeah, The whole yeah. team. Everyone's kind of out there waiting. Like, that or was it the airline? No, it was the airline. It was yeah, the airline. Yeah, yeah. So it was, yeah. it was, Those things happen, man. You they You just got to roll with the punches. You just got to roll know? with it. And, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I mean, big why. You know, we're going to get into that right after the commercial break. But mm. I just want to kind of paraphrase it right now I, I know you're a big fan of working with youth and stuff like that and kids absolutely, absolutely. are there any kids that really stand out any one individual child that maybe you supported oh man there's always one there's always one um there there is uh there's a few kids that have been very very special um that i've been able to work with uh one special kid i got a chance to work with um uh he's out in st john new brunswick canada um there was two really, uh, Adam Lambert and Julian Roach. But this young man, Julian Roach, yeah. super passionate, uh, worked yeah. really, really hard. No one knew who he was, and uh, ended up uh, not only becoming a basketball player, but getting a full two hundred eighty thousand dollars scholarship to go to Santa Clara what? University. What? Yeah, so hold that thought. We're gonna come back to that. Awesome. Wow, David Cooper, myself, James Ert, we are on the Dynamo Show, and we're gonna come right back after this short commercial break. And welcome back to the Dynamo Show. I am your host, James Ert. We're here with David Cooper, not only an athlete, but an entrepreneur. Now, let's talk skills, okay? You got all kinds of skills in an athlete, okay? It takes skills to be an entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. Are there any similarities? Oh, absolutely. Um, it's, it's, it's the same. It's the same. Um, the same hard work, commitment, um, dedication, focus uh, that it takes to be a professional athlete. It's the same thing you need to, you need to apply in business. Um, you know, and that that go get it in this, go, go get it, you know, go after it. And, uh, and uh, there's going to be ups, downs, failures. We keep pushing through. It's, it's like a mirror image. It is. It is. So what was the big decision from going from like semi-pro athletics, you know, right into entrepreneurship or being your own boss, we'll call it, you know, why? 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 Well, you know what? I, I was fortunate enough to have a little bit of both. Um, I, I, there was a team that I owned, um, 2007, um, mm-hmm. and owned, I owned yes. For real? Uh, yes. I was a player owner. Um, I had a chance to do a little bit of both. Nice. Yeah, so that was pretty neat. And um, 
you know, unfortunately, because of my, my knee injuries, I knew that uh, getting to that next level uh, was, was probably not going to be there, but um, being able to have a business and being able to help people and, and to work and to mentor and give back would be something that we'd be passionate about. So it was an easier transition uh, to go from owning a team to running it to coaching mm -hmm. um, and then stepping off the court uh, and up into the office. So It's all community. And I, and I know you're a big fan of community, you know, and, and, and the community that we're going to talk about is Mississauga. Mm. Okay, represent the nine, yes, the nine. nine. Yes. <laughs> I'm Marilyn Monroe Towers nine. Oh, so yes. I, I'm a big fan of Mississauga. I was an Oakville boy, you know, I went from London to Oakville to now Mississauga. Okay. I found my, my home, I planted my flag. Yes. And obviously you have. Tell me about Mississauga and community for Oh, you. man, Mississauga is a beautiful community. It is. Beautiful rising, community. rising, that, Oh, fast. rising very, very fast. Yeah. That, that whole peel. Um, area is just awesome. That's true, it's awesome, and uh, you know we we we, we have a uh, program here there in, in Mississauga, mm -hmm. uh, GTA Prep that's located in Mississauga. Yeah, GTA uh, Prep. Yes, right? yes. Dot com. Dot com. GTA Prep. Dot com. Check it out, everyone. GTA Tell Prep. Dot com. Uh, it and is it for poor kids and rich kids, both kids, all kids, all kids, everybody? Well, you know what? It's, it's it is open for everybody. Um, I love for that. you know for. For kids, it's privileged. Um, kids that may not have uh, such an opportunity, and uh, what it is is it's a it's a it's a, it's a prep program uh, for 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 young for young men and uh, and young women coming next year mm -hmm. that want to play at, at the highest level um, okay. using basketball as a conduit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, to be able to get to university uh, right. and potentially get full scholarship, the university paid for. Any success stories? Um, so far, uh, we have a few. Um, mm -hmm. There's one 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 special. Uh, a young man, um, there's a couple, uh, mm -hmm. especially, but one special, AJ Lawson, okay. um, another one, Jaden Campbell, that yep. uh, right now they're and uh, DeAndre Perry that's being looked at by a lot of universities in the states for full scholarships. How exciting is that? Oh, it's exciting. Yeah, those are big testimonials. Yes. You know, we work with a lot of kids in the Jane and Finch region, mm. right? So there's a ball program there. We've had a few scholarships come out of there. So imagine going from from way down yeah. here to scholarship. Oh, the man. path that has to happen and take and the guidance and the support and the love absolutely right it's not just a you know the individual it's the community around that individual supporting them and we all know how important that is it's very important it's man. very important and no it's funny it, it, it's, it's people that usually are involved that can that really understand that uh, how important that is is that the community has to be involved in it it's not going to be one coach or or uh one parent that's going to change their lives it's the community all together right? it's not just on the ball court true you know, it's Absolutely. in the home, in the household, at Absolutely. school, you know, everything to keep that boy on point. Yeah. Or girl, right? That's true. Bishoplight.com. Yes. Yeah, let's talk. Yeah, so, so bishopelite.com. So, elite, elite. Yes, my yes. Bad. No, it's bishopelite.com. Yeah, great. And uh, what, what, what it is, is uh, so bishopelite.com, is, it's, it's a program that does training and development. So yeah. we help uh, young, young people, young men, boys and girls uh, become better in the game of basketball. But we use it as a conduit for life. And life. Uh, life, life coaching, style. life coaching, yeah. and so um, our whole thing is uh, being the best is not being better than anyone else; it's being better than yourself. Yeah, and uh, pushing yourself every day. And so uh, we use Bishop Elite as a as a way to 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 mentor, work okay. with young with, with young people, um, and then uh, some of the kids there that do, that do well, yeah. um, they can move on to have different opportunities like GTA Prep. Okay. And so, so uh, teach the teachers how to teach the teachers, and yeah. everybody eats. Everybody, there it is. Yeah. There it is. They're fishing for the day. That's you know, it. They're teaching the fishing. So, I mean, that that's been phenomenal, and um, and we're seeing a great, great uh, increase of, of participants, and and I've uh, seen a lot of growth from from a lot of young people that's there. What about nettimemarketing.com? Ah, nettimemarketing.com. So, net we got them all in there. Man. We got them all in there. Yes. <laughs> so, 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 nettime marketing is uh, is marketing consulting firm that uh, deals in sports, um, and it helps uh, not for profit organizations. It helps professional sports teams and leagues. Um, what kind of not for profits? Uh, not for profits. Uh, usually sports related, not for profits. Okay. Um, yeah. Those all youth related. Or? Youth related. A lot yeah. of them are youth related. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, but also special needs as well. Um, that just work to help create an impact in their communities and uh, they help them in terms of fund fundraising, um, in terms of marketing, in terms of uh, uh, just all out um, uh, mentorship. Mm -hmm. Uh, for, I for love new it. entrepreneurs, I just so love anything cool. youth related, I'm all over it. Right yes. now, we're actually building a, an at-risk teens ranch up uh, between Branson, Caledon area. It's uh, working with ex-gangbangers, current gangbangers, kids that are facing time. Uh, they're going through the judicial system. They're all between the ages of 12 to 17, 
But uh, awesome. a, a big thing is keeping them active, keeping them focused. We have a permanent facility that's being built. We got all kinds of support. I actually just had uh, Gary Vaynerchuk. He's uh, he's an uh, internet entrepreneur. He gave us 50k a couple Wednesdays ago. We had a big real estate guy in Toronto mirror that. Gave us another 50k, another Ooh. speaker, another 10k. Some kid ran up to me, gave me 500 bucks. 20 year old kid. He's like, I love what you're doing. I don't have a lot of money, but I'm so passionate about you helping these kids. Oh, you know, wow. another friend gave a, a grand. We did, I think it was like 100. $111,500, okay, based on the concept of this ranch opening up for these boys, okay? Wow. One of the things we want to implement is sport. Any suggestions or tips for me and my team oh. to work with these boys? Mm. Wow, I tell you, I, the first thing I would say is that so fortunate, so fortunate um, for those young men and uh, so fortunate for you. Uh, I think the growth comes really from us, the teaching, giving back more growth comes from us than even sometimes it impacts them. And one of the things I would say is that um, really encourage them to find a passion in, within that sport mm -hmm. that you can use to be able to mirror different things in their life. Because what I realize is that sports just opens up so many doors and avenues oh, yeah. in terms of understanding discipline and focus. Um, and one thing I love is that uh, being able to, to try and fail. I think it's mm -hmm. one of the biggest things that a lot of youth that struggle from the inner city, um, having grown up in some different situations, seeing some things, I understand that um, it's usually that opportunity and that mm -hmm. fear of failure and mm -hmm. unknowing. So um, Sometimes even the fear of success. Fear of success, I think, yeah. sometimes is, is probably the biggest, to it be is. honest. Because then you got something to lose. Yes. Yeah. You know, and you have to fight for something to, to maintain it. As they always say, it's harder for you to to, to maintain something it is to actually attain, attain it. it. Attain yeah. it, that's right. And even harder to sustain it. Yes. Right, right, yes. right. So let's say we put up a net at the ranch, okay? It's actually called Reviver. Okay. R-E-V-I-E, uh, sorry, R-E-V-I-V-E-R. -E -E so it's a, it goes backwards and frontwards, it's the same. And the eye is in the middle, Ooh. right? So it's like these, these wings spreading for these young boys. I like so if that. we were to invite you to come out and shoot some 21 with the boys, would you consider it? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Maybe on a I'm final note, let's talk to the youth, okay? Yeah. Look into the camera and tell some of these young kids how to stay on the straight and narrow. Oh, awesome. Well, I'll well, I say this. I'll say the first thing I would tell any youth, uh, and we always tell our youth, is to, uh, is to find a passion, find your why. Um, Ask yourself why you're doing whatever you're doing, and um, and once you find that why and passion, then go after whatever that thing is with everything you have, and don't worry about anybody else. Don't worry about who's saying your naysayers. And I always say this: have your dream and believe in that dream. And if your dream is big enough that the person next to you feels that you can accomplish it, then it needs to be bigger. Make a dream that's outrageous, outlandish, and go after it with everything you have. And I think once that happens, your focus, your discipline, your dedication, um, who you are as an individual to the core will change and you become the best person you can be. So I, that's my advice to anybody in any situation, any youth, um, is to go after it. Go after your passion. Find your why and your dream. I love it. How do they find David Cooper? You can find David Cooper. Um, it, all the wanted posters around the city, you'll find it. Um, but no, really. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you can find me at, at gtaprep.com. Um, you'll see me there. I'm also bishopeliteCanada.com um, and uh, at nighttimemarketing.com. Any one of those, you'll be able to find emails and everything about it. And you'll be able to see me and, and then we can hang out. I love it. I can't wait to hang out with you and play some ball yes, on the Reviver to Court. It. Looking forward uh, to it. That's awesome. That yes. is David Cooper. This is the Dynamo Show. My name is James Erd, and I am so privileged and grateful and honored to have such amazing guests, not only on this show, but the past 14 before this 15th episode. We will see you at episode number 16.